Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am the Uncanny Omar. How's it going, everybody? This is Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions, and join me today for your overview of the Batman Adventures Omnibus from DC Comics. So let's go ahead and dive in. And welcome back, everybody. One of my most anticipated Omnis of the year is finally here. The Batman Adventures Omnibus with this amazing cover that just brings back so many memories of just waiting for the cartoon to air after school. So I'll talk about what's included in here and what these stories are about and why I was looking forward to this. Uh, but first, let's check this out. Kelly Puckett, Paul Dini, Bruce Tim, Mike Perobeck. Lost him at a really young age. And the Batman Adventures Omnibus. I'll talk a little bit about Mike and his legacy. Uh, when we look at his wonderful artwork, The Batman Adventures. And you have Batman right there from the animated series. The DC logo. And the legendary animated series comes to comics. And the ISBN down here. And of course another animated style picture of Batman right there. Uh, the retail price of this book is $150. Let's look at this underneath the dust jacket. So first, let's look at the flaps. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Hey, I was talking about that earlier uh, in my introduction. So here's a little bit of bio on the creators. Kelly Puckett, Paul Dini, Bruce Tim, Mike Parabek. I'll talk a little bit more about those as we look at the story. But first, let's check out this amazing image of Batman and Batgirl in the background there. And his rogue gallery of the animated series like Killer Croc, Clayface, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, the Riddler, and Man Bat. And you're going to be seeing those faces through this omnibus. So we're going to be opening this up, checking out this wonderful artwork, talking about some of the stories. And what exactly is this? Is this a straight-up adaptation of the cartoon? Well, I'll just go ahead and answer that. No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, there's just one story in here that was adapted from, well, Mask of the Phantasm. So we'll talk about what's collected. We'll look at the binding and, of course, give you an idea of what kind of stories are in here. All right, let's go ahead and crack this open. I love the end sheets here with the different characters that show up through these very pages and lots of Batman in his different faces here. And you have some of his allies here, not just from the Bat family, but also, I guess, the extended Bat family, the Gotham Police Department, the Batman Adventures, that familiar face. And here are all the credits, like Kelly Puckett, Paul Dini, Bruce Tim, Ty Templeton, Martin Pasco, and Alan Grant. Because that's right, he does an awesome uh, issue in here. It's got anarchy in it. And then you have the pencilers here, like Mike Parabek, Bruce Tim, Ty Templeton, Matt Wagner. John Byrne actually draws an issue, which we'll look at. Uh, Rick Burchett doing some of the inks, Bruce Tim. And Dan Reba, Glenn Murakami, who was doing some of the storyboards on the animated series. And your colorists like Rick Taylor and Glenn Murakami, Bruce Tim, Letters, Tim Harkins, and Richard Starkings. And then your collection cover art there by Bruce Tim. Here's your table of contents. And starting with an introduction and a forward. And then kicking it off with the Batman Adventure. When the book was originally published and who drew the cover. And we have the introduction here by Kelly Puckett talking about just how lucky he was to work on the book, but also giving a lot of love and respect to Mike Parabek and just how close they were working together on the series. And we'll look at the art here in a little bit. And this forward right here is by Scott Peterson and kicking it off with the Batman Adventures number one. So you have Batman Adventures 1 through 36 in here, the annuals 1 and 2, the special number one shot, and then the Batman Adventures Mad Love one shot, a story from 
uh, Batman Black and White number one, and then the Mask of the Phantasm adaptation. So that is what's collected in this big book. And it's a big book. It's 1,200 pages. So who kicks off the book is Kelly Puckett, who was editor on the Batman comics during this time, but he got the chance to write the Batman animated series, uh, and then Ty Templeton. Now, there's a little bit of background story behind how all this got started. And it all starts before the premiere of the Batman animated series, whenever they showed it at a San Diego Comic-Con, the trailer, which is that opening that is so iconic. And what DC wanted to do was kind of, not I don't want to say cash in, but almost take a gamble as to make comics for people that were watching that show and make the characters look and act like they do in the TV show, the animated series that premiered in 92. So that's what Kelly Puckett wanted to do because during this time, it was right around the time when Batman was getting grim and gritty. We had Nightfall right around. As a matter of fact, I think we had Nightfall going on uh, when <laughs> these stories were being published too. So, you know, Batman was being replaced by Jean-Paul Valley, who was, you know, little bit of a nutcase but also did not shy away from killing uh, so they wanted to tell stories about Batman about the way that they remembered Batman and there's a wonderful um, I think it's Kelly Puckett that states in the introduction here about selling people old wine <laughs> old wine in a new bottle and it's something that Dennis O'Neill told him that if you can give readers characters They've known for years in a brand new package, he called it a bottle and compared it to old wine, they'll eat it up or I guess drink it up in that case. And I never thought about that, right? Like, I mean, that's what comics are. That's what they're supposed to do. These characters are supposed to act a certain way and it doesn't matter to the stories that they're in as long as they're staying true to the character. And that is a wonderful way of putting it. And that's something that he remembered Dennis O'Neill telling him when he began his journey writing these stories. Now, the series went on as it was supposed to be a mini series, like a three issue mini series uh, set in the world of Batman the Animated Series. So these are not adaptations, they are original stories, but these characters are the characters from the Batman Animated Series. And it did so well that they decided this is too good, let's just make it an ongoing series. And sure enough, they went on and made an ongoing series. And the first three issues, I, I say, are not the best example as to what this represents, what it can be. Uh, they are written by Kelly Puckett, Ty Templeton drawing them. And the first story features the Penguin. The second story features Catwoman. And it's an overall story arc that's connected by the Joker. Even though the Joker story is dark and freaking crazy uh, with issue number three. But what they were really doing is they were really now trying to cash in on the whole Batman Returns franchise. I mean, we had McDonald's Cubs. It was everywhere. And these were the villains that were in Batman Returns. The Penguin and Catwoman. And of course, Joker was in the first Batman movie by Tim Burton. So he kind of brings it all together. And his scheme is actually pretty wicked. He wants to take over a station and torture Commissioner Gordon in front of the whole world just to show how broken the law is and how it doesn't really matter. I thought that was a cool uh, plan. That's something that you would see in the comic books. And then that little story arc wraps up. Most of these are standalone stories, like a one-off story that doesn't continue into the next one. But some of them are like two, three parts. Very rarely do you get those. This is the Jonathan Crane story. The um, What is his name? The, the Scarecrow. Oh, and this is a really cool story. It's about the Scarecrow trying to make people forget how to read. He's tired of the just the educational system and he wants to just make everybody ignorant. This story is freaking brilliant. I'm not going to talk about each one, I promise. I'm just going to give you a small glimpse. This is called The Green Door, or The Third Door. Green Door, sorry. I was thinking about The Hulk. Uh, the Third Door. This one is freaking genius. Written by Kelly Puckett and Brad Rader drawing this. This is long before we had Bruce Wayne murder, Batman fugitive. We had this story where Bruce Wayne is framed for murder. And when Dick Grayson's out there trying to solve this crime while Bruce is taken in, 
he figures out that somebody's out to kill Dick Grayson, so he's got to hurry up and manage to find a way to get out of that prison cell. And then issue number seven begins Mike Parabek's journey as the ongoing artist on the Batman Adventures. And there's something special about his art. Yes, it's got that cartoony feel to it, but the shadows and the composition and I don't know, there's just something really special about his artwork. And the first time I ever saw his art was in the pages of the Batman Adventures, um, mainly because of a certain redhead on the cover. And it's the one that's worth a lot of money that I got rid of a long time ago, and I'll talk about it here in a second. Uh, but there was just something special about his art. I had never heard of uh, Mike Parabek before this, and when he passed away... I think he passed away while these books were still coming out. Either these or Batman and Robin Adventures, which is a follow-up to this, which are not included in here. And neither is the, what is it called? The Adventures Continues. Those are not collected in here. Nor the Batman Begins, or Batman Begins, Batman Beyond Adventures. Those are not collected in this particular omnibus either. Uh, but he had diabetes and passed away at the age of 30. And that is just way too young. My gosh. Like, the amount of stories he could have told. You know, and I always compare people's lives to the stories that they penned. Uh, but yeah, he just, he was gone way too young. And sometimes life is just not fair. Uh, but this is the first time I ever saw his artwork right here with the Batgirl story. And I got this because of this young lady here. And I'll explain why in a second. I had no idea it was going to be worth any money because it's the first comic appearance of Harley Quinn. Uh, so if you have it, in, yes, it is. So this is the first time I saw his art. And during the time that this book came out, it predates Batgirl showing up in the Batman animated series. So it was really cool to see Barbara Gordon back as Batgirl because I loved her as Oracle. But I mean, it's been a few years since the Killing Joke and we hadn't seen her in a bat suit. So it was awesome to see her. Now, her origin in the story of the animated series is a little bit different than it is here. But I actually like this one. This is a solid story. And yes, it is the first comic appearance of Harley Quinn. Uh, she takes on both Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. She's a bit of a badass. All right, let's... Oh, this is an awesome... Dang, all these stories are great. It's the last Tango in Paris story, I think, with Talia. Yeah. So, Talia al Ghul appears here in issue number 13. And her and Bruce team up. It's not her and Batman, really. They're out to find a MacGuffin. But they have to go in, uh, to Paris. And they're out during the day, on dates, and the ending is so heartbreaking when you, as a reader, realize why Batman must remain alone. It's a solid story. So the Scarface stories, there's some solo Robin stories in here. Um, let's get to issue number 16. This, so I'm skipping some of them. This is Act 1, <laughs> Seduction of the Innocent. Um, but this is a solid story right here about the Joker kidnapping an artist that works here, let me see if I can find it. If Yes, at CD Comics, who's publishing this Gotham Adventures. And it's pretty much showcasing how the Joker's a fool. He's getting beat up by Batman. So he kidnaps one of the artists and makes him draw his own comic books where Joker is the winner. Or where he is pretty much the lead of the story. There's a wonderful team up between Batgirl here and Robin, not knowing their secret identities and not knowing that they will end up going to school together. Oh, Two-Face appears in issue 22, of course, on purpose. And this is a solid story about their friendship, like Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent's friendship before he became Two-Face. And it's got a little bit to do with that coin and why Batman decides to keep that coin at the end. There's a Poison Ivy story in here. I've always dug that cover. You throw a bunch of ninjas in there at Batman. And there's some badass choreography going on through these panels here too. Especially when he's fighting uh, the brother and sister here. Yeah, these fights right here. And then we get to the first annual. It's Roxy. It's introduced through these pages. You get a little more of Scarface in here. So little short stories of these particular characters. Uh, the Joker... This is a classic team-up of Superman and Batman. It's very rare to see someone outside of the DC Universe, or outside of the Batman family, 
come into the comic book and team up with him. Kind of like the animated series. Uh, so this is a big one. This is both Superman and Batman teaming up against uh, Maxi Zeus and Lex Luthor. More team-ups of Batgirl and Robin. A little bit of flirting going on there. Batman accused of murder. Very similar to that story earlier. Uh, this, oh, this is uh, Harley Quinn daydreaming about the Joker. All right, let's talk about Holiday Special. So these stories in here, like Holiday Special and Mad Love, were so awesome that they adapted them later on to the cartoon in, I think it was Batman New Gotham. Was it New Gotham? Is that what it was called? The Gotham Adventures? Whatever we consider season four of Batman. Uh, but you'll see wonderful talent in here. Paul Dini, Bruce Timm. Uh, writing a lot of the stories together and drawing them. Now, all of these stories have shown up with the exception of one, and that is the White Christmas story, which is a follow-up to not the Sub-Zero movie, um, but there was an, the, the origin episode of Mr. Freeze. This is a good story that features Mr. Freeze and why he uh, is making snow during Christmas Day. Oh, it's it's a good heartbreaking story. That one hits. That one still hits. I did promise I would go back and show some John Byrne artwork. So here's the Paul Dini story in the annual with John Byrne drawing this particular story with that animated style. Uh, but let's keep going here. Oh, gosh, who would not crush on that girl, man? When I was younger, that's... Woo! I wasn't about Poison Ivy or Harley Quinn. Give me back, girl. My gosh. All right, let's let's keep going through here. Yes, we finally get. We actually no. He shows up a call a couple times. My favorite bat villain, Ra's al Ghul, and of course I have to call him Ra's al Ghul because that's what he called himself in the cartoon. I know everybody pronounces it a little bit different with Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, but Rage is the way most of us grew up in watching the animated show. This is a really cool story because this one doesn't even really feature Batman, but it features these three guys that are the masterminds behind this bank robbery. This is the story that has Anarchy, and it is written by Alan Grant. Anarchy's never really made an appearance in the animated series. Another rarity, but we have Etrigan showing up here, teaming up with Batman, with this story about Ra's al Ghul again. Like I said, he shows up a couple of times. Issue 33, I wanted to talk about this one because I think this one is really awesome. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Ty Templeton comes back. This time around, he comes back as a writer. And he writes the story about Bruce Wayne, not Batman, going on a date with this young lady who has a kid. And they're watching The Grey Phantom, which is awesome. Or not The Grey Phantom, I'm sorry, The Grey Ghost. How dare I? And they get mugged on Crime Alley. Or maybe it's not Crime Alley. But you, you get it, right? He's getting severe flashbacks, what happened to his parents. So, he ends up leaving her to go and find the mugger. He leaves her and the kid. Of course, you know, they're safe. But he changes to Batman and his whole mission is to go and stop this mugger. And by the ending, he realizes why it's difficult to have a life like Batman's. And Bruce Wayne. That it, not every woman would understand. So, that that's a really powerful issue. There's a lot of powerful, good stories in here that... I miss, I, I miss this era of just the simpler times, even though, you know, the stakes are high, you do see a little bit of blood, uh, but it's not gory, it's not gritty, it's not Dark Knight Returns Batman, it's more of a lighthearted take, true detective kind of stories in here, and I don't know, it, it brings back a lot of memories as to why I got them, and honestly, the reason I got them was because of issue number 12, and... I wanted to know why Batgirl was making an appearance in the animated series, but she hadn't yet. She had appeared in the comic book. It's such a freaking awesome picture right there. And as it turned out, none of the stories were adapted from the animated show. It was the other way around. They were original stories, and then later, some of them were adapted into the animated series. All right, this is the one exception, Batman the Mask of the Phantasm. This is the adaptation uh, by Kelly Puckett and Mike Parabek doing uh, the writing in here. But this is where he gets to meet this young lady, Andrea Beaumont. And we also have a new vigilante in the streets of Gotham. It's going around 
and doing things a little bit different than Batman is. And of course, what's a Batman story without Joker? But this is the comic adaptation of The Mask of the Phantasm. I always say, if it wasn't for Batman Year 2, we'd have no Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Probably to this day, the best Batman movie ever. And of course, to wrap this book up, is The Mad Love, which to me is still the best Harley Quinn story. Written by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, who created the character for the animated series. And they wanted to give her an origin story. This is the other one that's been adapted into, I think it was New Gotham. But it is the origin of Harley Quinn and how she became Harley Quinn. It's a freaking awesome story. All right. Then we get some Batman Black and White stories here that were originally printed in the Batman Black and White. Those are done by Bruce Tim. The Pinup Gallery. Alex Toth. That's awesome. And Dave Gibbons. Kelly Jones, who doesn't really have this type of art style. He uses a lot of shadows. That's great. Kevin Nolan. Mark Chiarello. Mike Mignola. It's great. Matt Wagner, Chuck Dixon, and Rick Burchett. And the Batman Adventures right there. And this is another one by... This is by Mike Parabek. This is what they used for the design of the board. Art on board. And this, this is Ty Templeton, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is Ty Templeton. Oh, it's up here. Uh, Batman the Collected Adventures Volume 1, covered by Ty Templeton. And... Adventures Volume 2 by Mike Perbeck and Rick Burchett. And this is issue number 7, which came with a poly bag. This is the poly bag art, and it came with a trading card from Topps Comics and a little bit of bio from the creators. Uh, Martin Pasco, who also passed away. He was one of the writers on the Mask of the Phantasm. But Mike Perbeck, phenomenal artist. If you're not familiar with this simple, classic, traditional style, Something really awesome about it that I've always enjoyed. Now, I talked about this book having 1,200 pages. Let's check out the build. It's a pretty big guy. It's a pretty big guy for 1,200 pages. And it does its job. Not a lot of spread pages. As a matter of fact, really the biggest spread pages that I've noticed, and maybe you have too, are towards the back here in these collections. So you can kind of get an idea of what kind of gutter loss there is. And it's very minimal. It is printed in this really thick, glossy paper. That's what they're using paper stock here and just i think it's my copy i don't think it's every copy but there's some wrinkles going on on my pages not all of them just some like these right here and it happens uh both from marvel and dc it's not a dc only thing uh but, you know not a big deal to me but if you've not checked this out and you want more of a traditional batman story a classic take Look back at what Batman adventures were like at a simpler time. And that's not downplaying this. Because this is amazing. The stuff that uh, they were able to do. You definitely need to check this out. Look at this. This is from issue number 6. Yes. So good. Very Hitchcock in story. As a matter of fact. Alfred Hitchcock makes a little bit of a cameo in this. If I'm not mistaken at the party. Yeah. Right there. That's what I thought. Uh, but that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the U.S. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. 
Let me know in the comments down below if you have fond memories of both the animated series and the comic books, or just the animated series and you weren't even aware of what these comics were all about. I would love to know all those comments down below, and if you have read these comics, what was your favorite one? If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out. Check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. Could not be making videos like these without you all. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.